My name is Robert Songer, and I might not look like it, but I am also from Japan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> although originally I'm from the United States. Uh, so I'm faculty at Kanazawa Technical College, and I do research at the Japan Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. So today I would like to talk, to have a, a discussion about the uh, theoretical foundation around gamification, and um, and talk about uh, uh, present a proposal for something I think is uh, is often missing or overlooked in the discourse, namely. Uh, the idea of playful affordances within a system. So, to get right into it, uh, earlier this year, in 2000, in February, there was published a review on the efficacy of gamified systems, the studies uh, presenting er empirical evidence on their efficacy, and it found that uh, there are a number of variables um, which contribute to it. Although, in the review, they said overall things were positive, but there's a large number, there's, there's a lot of variety in um, specifically the context and the users that are using them. So rather than asking if gamification is effective, I'm, I'm focusing my research on how game, gamification can be effective. And for this, I'm looking at um, something within gamification. I think it can be classified within gamification called Gameful Design. Now there's a very excellent paper called From Game Design Elements to Gamefulness, Defining Gamification. And that's the paper that defines it as uh, game design elements in non-game context. Um, that paper also uh, compares it to the idea of gameful de design, where gameful design focuses on game-like experiences um, that are brought through using game design principles, um, and it focuses on instilling ludic qualities for the behavioral outcomes of that are similar to playing a game. Whereas gamification is often just seen as a game layer, just uh, virtual rewards layered on top of an existing activity, um, and it's been criticized as using rhetoric and metaphor to coerce the user into feeling like they're playing the game. Um, so I like to focus on gamification here. And the purpose of gamification is often quoted as, as motivation, um, whereas in educational studies for game-based learning um, and, and scholars of, of education uh, and games, they often say that uh, they, they see a lot of potential for actual cognitive outcomes uh, through games and gameplay, not just motivation. But for the sake of, of this presentation, I'd like to talk about motivation. Uh, there's a macro theory in psychology called self-determination theory, and this uh, focuses on autonomy, competency, and relatedness as these uh, human psychological needs, which foster the high quality of motivation. And there's even been studies that say that it's these psychological needs uh, that games, games meet in their, in their gameplay. And this is why they are so uh, compelling. And whether these psychological needs are present in real life determines whether the gameplay is maybe obsessive or um, Um, and out of Singapore, there's even a study of gamers, which says that uh, they, they, they created profiles of gamers based on their passion for gaming. And they found that amongst all of them, it's these dispositional flow and intrinsic regulation, um, which has the strongest factor for motivating them to play. Their intrinsic... <laughs> Intrinsic motivation refers to their own internal desire to play as compared to external regulations such as rewards or uh, social pressure, peer pressure, that sort of stuff. What is dispositional flow? Uh, dispositional flow is <laughs> from the psychological theory of flow uh, by Sikh Semihaki. Um, it's composed of these 
it, it describes the optimal psychological experience. The optimal experience. It's one of the theories that gave birth to positive psychology. And um, it com composes of these nine elements, many of which are easy to design for, such as clear goals and unambiguous feedback. Uh, others of which are more difficult and maybe even ambiguous, such as autotelic experience. Game designers always, always uh, <coughs> set these as their design goals for the, the gameplay experience, but autotelic experience refers to something that is um, fun or entertaining in its, in its own way. It's um, you do the activity for the sake of the pleasure of doing the activity, not because, not for some other reason. So, um, to try and understand where these these uh, elements of flow can come from, we, I, we looked at some frameworks for game design and analysis. Now, in, in the gaming industry, this MDA framework is often quoted, where it breaks games down into the mechanics, such as the rules, uh, the dynamics, the, which are the sort of action, actions that are possible in playing the game, and the aesthetics being the emotional experiences that people have when playing. Um, in research on transformational games, there's a framework called Playful Persuasion. Um, it breaks down the system, the interactions with the, that are possible for the user, the experience the user has, and the transformation of the user's behavior. So, for example, the piano stairs is a popular example where they set the stairs to um, play a piano note when you walk up. And the idea here was to get more people to use the stairs rather than an escalator. And because the, the stairs would play music as you walked on them, that persuaded people to use the stairs more instead of the escalator. That's the transformation that they're talking about. And finally, that same paper that defines gamification outlines what they viewed as game design elements in levels of increasing abstraction. So the most concrete level is the interface design. And this is where things like bad points, badges, and levels reside, um, which leads a lot of game designers to criticize gamification as being superficial. But in the deeper levels, there's patterns and mechanics, principles and heuristics. Here's like the usability of games and principles. Game design models, such as those uh, associated with game genres, and game design methods, specific methods for design games. So I wanted to show these in comparison to show, uh, I wanted to compare these side by side just to show the, the cor what correlation might be. But in either case, there's levels of, of concrete and abstract uh, elements within the system. And flow um, is, it seem, appears to be in, in the more abstract levels of game design. Um, if we, if we look at two definitions of game, the word game, what is a game? Uh, have you ever really thought about that? <laughs> There's uh, Salem and Zimmerman, they, um, they're popular game scholars. They define it as a system in which players engage in an artificial conflict defined by rules that result in a quantifiable outcome. So the chessboard and pieces, for example. But Jesse Schell, a game designer, he summarizes the definition as a problem-solving experience and then adds to it by saying it's one that's approached with a playful attitude. And so in this way, he, he suggests that, again, the user experience is an important part of playing a game. So this, the autotelic experience and the playful attitude all come from this phenomenon of play. If you look at the literature for um, the, the for human play behavior, we can see that play actually is defined by both the attitude, the psychological state, as well as the activity, the form, it engaging with the game system. And um, the autotelic experience, the it's it's not autotelic experience. It's it's fun. It's a fun activity that's communicated implicitly through the framing of the activity. So you don't, you don't really need to say to someone, hey, we're playing now, unless they start to <laughs> deviate from it. Right? And finally, the idea of the magic circle is also a good analytical tool 
for play, it's the, it describes the physical, psychological, and social context of the play or the game. So I'll leave this question, this is a psychological question, or I'm sorry, mm -hmm. philosophical question that you can ask yourself. Is it, should it still be considered play if you're not enjoying the game? What if you never enjoy the game? Should you still be, can you still say, I, I play the game? So one of the reasons why I think gamification can work is because of this, um, these different contexts. And the psychological state is the, the shared space in between. Um, the, the physical or virtual artifacts of the games are symbolic of uh, artifacts from the target game. Um, this is in, in a whole game. Uh, for example, Monop Monopoly is a good example here where um, Monopoly it has the target domain of capitalism and real estate, and it, it takes artifacts such as properties and money, currency, and creates its own uh, symbolic elements within the game. Where but the psychological state, this is the, this is the fun, the playful state, can carry over in between the two. When someone on Wall Street, for example, is gaming the system. They're approaching stocks and bonds with, with a playful end. So, from, from all of this background so far, um, we can see that the game-like experience depends highly on the context being gameful. So, the, the target domain that's being gamified it already has its own context, its own uh, social and physical context. Uh, which need to be integrated into the bounds of the game of the game of the system itself. So whereas a game will, will take elements from the target domain and bring it into its own context, a gamified system will then expand its context to include these artifacts and the social context of the target domain. Specifically learning, this means then that the learning goals and everything uh, artifacts for learning should be approached with game design uh, in mind in order to, to make them become gameful. So with all of this in mind then, uh, we tried to identify specifically what can be described as an autotelic experience. Because this would give us something to design for as well as evaluate within our system. And we looked at the literature for play uh, and fun, fun experience, pleasurable activities. And the popular one, Roger Kaiwa, um, had came up with these terms, agon, alia, mimicry, and illness, which are uh, challenge, um, uh, residing, giving in to fate, chance, chance and fortune is alia, mimicry is Make believe and illness is like vertigo, the physical sensations. And we compile a list of play terms from each of these, which um, come from game design and um, interactive artwork design, uh, as well as like psychological papers on, on pleasure and fun. And we discovered that there seems to be, uh, we, we can see some pattern of some activity leading to a psychological state um, and generalize them into contest and challenge for Avon, exploration and discovery for Aaliyah, Im Im imagination and creativity for mimicry, and then sensation and arousal for millions. And given these four uh, catalyst and state relationships, we then can arrange them around the, the core of a, of a playful attitude. So, when a person adopts the playful attitude, they become a player. And then when a player engages in either an, act, an activity of contest, or exploration, or imagination, or sensation, then they, then they begin playing, and they experience these uh, pleasurable states of arousal, challenge, discovery, and creativity. And in this model, on the outside, these extra terms are examples of further terms of, of, of a pleasurable experience, 
that um, may be more specific, uh, may be more, something more specific that you're aiming for in your design. <coughs> so this model then provides the, uh, the affordances, the actions as, as uh, guidelines for designing a system, um, whereas the, the states on the outside will, would be qualities that you can uh, evaluate against. And, um, well, the, actually, when building this, when uh, creating this model, the, the circular shape of it actually presents uh, a, a potential for it to, to be used in, in, a, in a radial chart when evaluating, evaluating the system. And um, I would hypothesize that uh, what a best playful experience would have high values for all four of these, these dimensions. Um, and finally, uh, once again, that the paper defining gamification talks about different modes that users enter when they're using a, a gamified system. The modes of, of play and utility. This model, however, is specifically focuses on the play mode of a gamified system. And so another method will need, would need to be required for uh, evaluating the usefulness of the system, the utility. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and uh, please read the paper if you have any more deep, uh, questions.